Joe Munt says Don't we can animate it. Um, you want, you can animate it. Like by all means, this is all uh, Creative right. Commons. Like, feel free to animate anything you see on the show. Completely out of context, especially if Kent said it. Hey, uh, speaking of post show and pre show, how about we do with a fucking show? Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 102 for Wednesday, the 16th of November, 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we have fucking Curtis LaRock with us tonight. What's up, Curtis? Oh, hello. I had to say your name really loud since your voice is going out. Yeah, thank you. I, I figured that would compensate. That. <laughs> How you doing, Kent? Uh, dude, I am trying to bring the energy. This is probably the most fun I'm going to have all week. Because this is a crappy work week for me. So I'm going to try to cram all of my week's worth of fun into this hour. Um, Yay! So, I hope I don't ruin it. So wh- what, <laughs> hap- what happens next week? Next week? Yeah, next week. Like Thanksgiving? Ah, uh, Thanksgiving. And that's Three what day work? And that's what day? Thursday? Thursday, okay. Thursday, so, like every year. So that just leaves how many work days that week? Three. Three work days. So yeah. that means this week is the week we have to do all of our shit for the, until the middle of December. Because next week is a wash. The week after that, we're all food hungover. And the week after nope. that, we're all catching up on the shit we just missed for the last two weeks. Yeah, no, that, that is absolutely true. This is, this is cram time This now. is like the if worst week of the year. If you want to finish something before the end of the year, you got to do it now, right. basically. Like th- this and is that's going through. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell it's you what. Oh my God! So after we finish this tonight, I'm going to. Uh, so two weeks ago, Jerry was talking about people that were writing stuff and making it to where it sounded way better than it was supposed to sound, and I was going to send him some bullets from an EPR. Guess what I get ah. to do tonight after we finish this podcast? I get You're to finish a fucking PR. EPR. Yeah. Oh uh, my God. Yeah. yeah. And, and I forgot to send it to him, but I, I probably will after this because I'll be so pissed off. After so for doing that, non non Air Force people, an EPR is the Enlisted Performance Report, which is like your annual appraisal. Yeah, and you have to write bullet statements that capture accomplishments. Well, typically, what happens is you do something like you change the light bulb, and you have to make it sound like you just saved the Air Force ten million dollars, <laughs> saved six lives, put out a fire. Yeah, it's so much fun. It's yeah, like extreme yeah. resume writing. And, and yeah, it's, and it's got to be they they want it like with as little white space as possible, so you can't just like be really concise. You got to actually you you, can, you you break every bullet down to the bare minimums, and you can you make it as concise as possible, and you you just have like this 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 shortened rummaging of of random fucking words, uh, <laughs> and then you have to fluff it back up to where it fits. But then, and that's where you can put the fluff in there to kind of make it match exactly the the proper length. Such a pain in the ass. Complete waste of time. Biggest biggest current waste of time in the Air Force yep. other than FOD walks. I'd say it's even worse than FOD walks. At least you get to go outside and go for a walk. That's true. There's some there's some exercise there. <laughs> okay, so we keep throwing out Air Force words. So FOD walk, is, FOD is foreign objects and debris or foreign object damage. So the, the airplane engines suck up rocks and nuts and bolts and shit off the flight line. So every morning, the people that work on the flight line have to go outside and like walk in a straight line to pick up all the crap. It's, it's, that sounds exciting. It's incredibly yeah, exciting. It's, it's not. It takes a lot of time. It's a lot of people and a lot of time and usually pick up a grand total of one pebble. That's tight. <laughs> that's not going to really? no. get sucked into an engine and, and, or... and that's the one because you go down and back and the pebble you pick up is the rock that fell out of your boot on the way down when you're, <laughs> when you're coming back but at least you get to go outside and go for a walk yeah See, that's good because <laughs> then you don't have to blame yourself for when uh, a jet goes down because that little pebble that you dropped on the way up exactly yeah. uh, th- so. this, this is a source of debate amongst a lot of us <laughs> logic seeking maintainers uh, exactly how, uh, how like uh, how the cost of the man hours of uh, versus how much are we actually saving? Like how many, it's one of those unknowns because you're preventing the thing that anyway. So I'm not, that, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but it, where you're going. If, it's ever, if it's ever saved a single aircraft or a single life, then all of it's worth it. There you go. So. Man, that's a really optimistic view. Hey, Curtis, how's your week been, man? Um, interesting. Um, I lost my voice, so there's that. Yeah. Um, did you find I, it? I, did I find it? Yeah. Can you? Can I think everybody listening knows the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> so you found about uh, half of it. Got it. Yeah. About yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was I was like sort of kind of fake sick, and in the middle of work, like right before I took my lunch, my voice just like cracked, and didn't uncrack. I was like, what's happening? Is this puberty all over again? I and yeah, and it just it stuck. Changes. Uh, yeah. Are you, are, are you growing hair, like you know, in down places? There? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't need any more. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, it's pretty silly because, like, so I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna add an extra week to my how my week been. Um, last week I went to a Yellow Car concert, and at those, they, this is their last tour. Um, so it was very sad, but at those shows, they're always like, oh, if you leave here and your voice is still working, you messed up. And so I was shouting all night and it was great. And when I left, my voice was like, yeah, I was like, okay, I did it. And next day it was totally fine. Uh So this time I, I, I don't have a real excuse and it's kind of dumb. See, whenever I'm at a concert like that and, and they demand that you shout and scream and holler and all this stuff, my first thought was always, who are you to, to make demands on how I use my voice? And then like three songs later, I'm like, Bleh! Yeah, exactly. So it's, just, you know. Yelling, like, like, you can't tell me to shout. I'm not going to do that just because you told me. Yeah, and the next thing you know, I can't talk because we've been yelling at the band the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, damn you, Three Days Grace. Um, so, Kent, how are you, man? Oh man, super tired. Uh, yeah, like I already said, what a week. Uh, really, about the the funnest thing that I've been doing this week that's occupying my time. I've been watching a lot of American Dad. Do you guys like that show? Wow, it's been a long time since I've watched American Dad. <laughs> we'll go with that. That sounds about right for me. Uh, yeah, no, I love, love, love Family Guy. I I can watch that show over and over and over, but I never really got into McFarland's to other shows all that much uh, until recently. And now American Dad is probably funnier. Like, more jokes per second. Per oh, absolutely. Second. Like, American Dad is hilarious. Yeah. I, I'm in love with that show. It, it, it's one, of, it's one of those things that... Uh, so, I don't watch Doctor Who because there's so much history behind it and not knowing... All of it makes you like this target for not knowing enough. Or if you know <laughs> everything, then you're target for being a super fucking who nerd, you know, a who right. or whatever. So I don't watch it for that reason. Um, all these like the Simpsons, same way. I enjoy the Simpsons. I, do, yeah. I, I avoid it so that I, I don't have a conversation piece. It's a conversation that I can just excuse myself from completely. All these other shows, like Family Guy, like if Family Guy's on, I can't not watch it. But any other McFarland stuff, I can just, I just walk away. I just walk yeah. away. See, I've, I've noticed though, like with with American Dad, you can watch a single episode in the middle of pick any season, mm-hmm. and it's it's completely independent. You don't need to know anything going into. No, I'm it. not talking about needing to know for the show. I'm just talking about needing to know for conversation's sake. Like, I don't want to be stuck in that conversation no. where somebody says, hey, do you watch American Dad? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I watch it. And they're like, oh, my God, did you see the thing with the chicken? And it's flying with, and it's got the <laughs> it's got the crossbow. And, and I'm just like, oh, God damn it. Damn it. Damn it. No, no. Go leave. Leave me alone. Leave, where's my beer? You know? Yeah. yeah. It's, um, so that's. Yeah, hype, hype, or heightened drama is what that just was. <laughs> That's my everyday life, man. So, <laughs> um, so I, I've been, so we all know, like I've been, I've said more than once, I'm having some problems with my back and everything else. And once in a while, I have a day when it's just like, hey, it's fine, it's fine. Like today, today was fine. Today's fine. You know why? Because I'm gonna, I'm getting a procedure done tomorrow. That's why today was fine. You uh-huh. know, it's my back's last chance. Hey, yeah, let's just be really good today. Then maybe we won't do the thing tomorrow, right? Um, <laughs> 
And everybody knows I have this damn trailer, this 35-foot travel trailer that we don't use enough to justify the cost. Okay, cool. Well, we also have this cover for the for the trailer. And we were determined to get it on this weekend because, well, we've been trying to get the cover on for a while, and we just haven't haven't done it. So I get back from taking the kids out to see uh, to see Doctor Strange this weekend. Oh, you did see it in 3D, amazing movie, especially ah, in 3D. If you're gonna no watch spoilers, that movie, you no have to. It, seen it yet. If if you're gonna see the movie, you have to watch it in 3D. Period. Dot. Right. End of story. There's. Pot, yeah, exactly yeah. What I said last week. <laughs> Ma- marijuana or no, you have to see it in 3D. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick, for that recommendation. Yeah. Um, right. And uh, so I came back from that. And the kids went to do, go do their homework because it's Sunday. And I decide, you know what? Right now, it's time to put the the cover on the trailer. So two hours later, with many roof climbings and some ropes. And some logic and one at least one harrowing Tarzan swing. <laughs> uh, I got it on, and it looks great, and it's wonderful. And that night, I couldn't sleep because I was essentially just paralyzed in my bed. Uh. So, with, you know, with, with, with great, with, with great uh, chores comes great pain or something like that. There, I know there's a saying there somewhere. Um, but that was how my, uh, my week went. That was pretty much summed it up. I mean, the, the high of Dr. Strange followed by the misery of of back pains and spasms and shit. So, Amos, real quick, would you say that your back problems would be a ritual misery? At this point, they're just misery. Just misery. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> R- R- ritual misery. Just, ritual just misery not. is more along the lines of when I when I try to get some. That's... <laughs> Whether oh, so whether or not it happens, someone's going through some ritual misery. Um, <laughs> so uh, All right. so hey, dude, I uh, I had a super geeky weekend this weekend, like massively. I bought an Amazon Echo. Been playing with that thing; it's super fun. I don't even know how much use I'm going to get out of it, but they were on sale for the two year anniversary at 129 dollars. Uh, the Google Home piqued my wife's interest while we were in Best Buy, and, and uh, Amazon Echo is two years ahead of it, and it shows. And uh, so I took the opportunity to buy one, and the kids are loving it, and they're having fun with it. I'm infor- having fun with it, and my wife has actually found utility in it. This might actually be the rare electronics win. So wow. <laughs> now, Curtis, you were clapping. Do you have one? That. Was that Amos? You cut out. Uh, mm-hmm. C- Curtis, you uh, you were clapping. Do you have one? No, I don't. But I I am very much into all this home stuff. Mm. Um, the Google, uh, the Amazon. Uh, and um, I was just wondering, how many times have you said Alexa since you purchased this thing? Intentionally or like as a command? Many, many, many times. As a non-command, yeah. once. Once? Okay. Yeah, because I was, I was talking to her. About, uh, talk, well, I'm already naming her. Na- her, her. Um, I, was, yeah. I was talking about yeah. it with the kids and just was like, blah, 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 blah. And, and one of the other kids comes in um, and they're like, who are you talking about, it's Alexa? And, she, and they were like, ah! I just, just set it off. You got to tell it to do something. Blah blah blah. Um, that would become a game in my house to get yeah. people to say. So. It, it, it's almost there for us. The, so my my son was in there like trying to give it commands, and he was like, "Alexa," you know, he, like he was all up on it, trying to yell at it and stuff. And oh. uh, I was like, "Dude, you, you don't have to do that. You can say it from anywhere." And I'm walking away at the time because I'm getting ready to go start start my truck from the uh, from the door because I'm white people rich and I got a remote start, and um. <laughs> and which will play into things later. Uh, and I'm talking to him, and he's like, well, well, how do you do it then? And I was just like, Alexa, play some jazz. And boop, 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 you know, and it just started playing. And, and all the kids are like, oh, why are you playing jazz all the time? I'm like, because fucking jazz, is, like if you can have background music, man, what's better than some nice jazz, you know? No words involved. You don't have, it's no, there's no cognitive load when you're listening to jazz. It just, it just plays. <laughs> So, especially when you're I like a nice little shit. cognitive load every now and again. <laughs> I, I like intentional cognitive loads. I don't like uh, just passive cognitive loads. <laughs> I'm a fan of the the surprise cognitive load. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, the other thing I geeked out about this week for video viewers, I'm wearing a Perseverance T-shirt from Alaska Brewing Company. Uh, I picked up. 
a, a a pick bottle or a bottle cap opener from the Alaska Brewing Company and a couple couple glasses and check this shit out. Holy cow, dude, you went eight. Um so so they were doing a, an event. We recorded last week on Thursday. Friday night they were doing an event for the thirtieth anniversary. And this is great because me I took my neighbor um and my wife drove us so we, we, we didn't have to like, you know, worry about driving home drunk and shit like that. We get there and it, it was if you buy a perseverance for eight fifty, which is how much they sell their beers for, they give you the perseverance thirtieth thirtieth anniversary glass for free. And I walk in there and like I'm getting three glasses and a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so I got my three glasses and perseverance is not like your light beer. It's, it's, we've discussed last week. It's a stout, you know? Yeah. There are computer monitor backs that are lighter than this beer. You know, they're shedding more light than this damn beer. Um, <clears throat> so I have my three beers and my pizza and, uh, Brian, my neighbor, he has, uh, some Alaskan ambers cause that's kind of his, his beer. And at the end of the night, we go up and they're like doing these drawings and shit. Like they have this tub of two thousand bottle caps, and they're all white. And if you find a gold one, you get a prize. And the prize is listed underneath it. The T-shirt was the first one that I found, and the sign was the second one that I found. And then the rest of the shit was just swag. Like we got a, a couple of covers, some stickers, or some koozies, some stickers, all this other shit. Just random. <laughs> here you go. So made out like a fucking bandit. And nice. great night. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a damn fucking I'm a swag nerd. So there you go. There's that. <laughs> um, and that's that's that was how I geeked out for the week. Curtis, you got uh, I see the shit notes here. You got some plenty some plenty of geeking out you did this week as well. Yeah, I I just threw a bunch of crap in the show notes. Um, none of it is extremely exciting. Um, so, um, aside from the crap that I do at work, um, I had to sort of take my work home with me and that my phone at some at one point decided to want to start shutting off at like 15 percent battery so i was like oh great now i'm the customer <laughs> and i had to spend my day off wiping my phone and not restoring from a backup and rebuilding it which is actually kind of fun um it's almost exactly the way i left it before I started the process, except for a few little changes, and at this point, I'm not sure whether or not it has helped. Um, I am getting, like, mixed signals from my phone now. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. It's, it's not like, fun. Like, you think Siri's India, you don't think she's India? Like, what kind of mixed oh, signals? <laughs> I don't have an iOS device, first of all, so Siri can, you know... Stay home. So but, Siri could be into you for all you care, and you just you don't yeah, you don't I'm care. Just like, nah, she, she, nah, she's not theory. she's not your mm. deal, huh? No, not my type. Um, yeah. Now, um, okay, Google lady, who is nameless lady, thing. So that's that's my jam. Um, when it works. <laughs> uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, it's an, it's an ongoing thing that I'm. Um, chronicling on my Twitter account, and that's that's probably like the most geeky geeky thing that I've done. Um, aside from that, I've been doing this thing that I like to do, where I, I start a list of things in Evernote mm -hmm. that are just kind of very topical and nerdy um, in the way that I catalog them. The, the, of course, this one is election related, but it's sort of related to conversations that I've been having with people about not like the politics of the election, but just how how it went, why it went, how it went, and um, sort of how voters think and things like that. And just uh, I've just been compiling links and stuff like that to see as, as ammo during conversations because when I have a conversation with someone, I like to treat it like it's a, like I'm writing a blog and I just randomly link throughout the conversation because I'm a geek like that. <laughs> nice. That's a, uh, that I don't think that way about conversations, but your, 
you saying that though your brain basically works the same way that mine works because i take two disassociated things and make it into one one thing um yeah i'm drawing a blank right now though and i cannot think of an, an example to give you but uh that is exactly how my brain works where when I, i'm like oh this is a thing and i know it's a thing and then i need an example and nope can't do it nope. yeah, i call it senior moments at work because <laughs> a lot of younger people and i'll be saying something and i'll just stop mid-sentence because i can't think of the word or the example that i was trying to come up with and they're like uh really yeah sorry i'm old <laughs> i mean I, I guess I can pretend I'm old, but like I don't I actually have an excuse. It's just, yeah. So you know, you know one thing that old people do, they plan their holidays well ahead of time. Kent, you have been trying to rock out this New Year's Eve planning, and we've had meetings on everything else. Holy shit, dude! Yeah, man. So this year, we've talked about it before. We've mentioned it before on here. Uh, so last year for New Year's Eve, you did a 24-hour stream yeah it basically covered almost every time zones new year's party and it was a lot of fun but you had a whole lot of downtime where not much was going on you were just kind of rambling at the camera or just staring at the camera <laughs> well this year we want to do the same thing this year but we want it to be a community project not just one person and sometimes a guest comes on we want to split it up between a list of volunteers, podcasters, uh, streamers of various kinds, people that possibly even that want to try their hand at streaming for the first time. Uh, just a, a lot of different people from the Diamond Club community are going to put together this thing where people will basically sign up for a time slot. And that's your hour or your two hours or three hours or whatever it is that you can do. And it'll be up to those hosts to come up with uh, events, you know, like games or subject matter, things like that, possibly guests. Uh, maybe they play music. It's kind of up to them. And very soon, possibly next week, we are going to have something to put out there to the community, basically a sign-up sheet in like a kind of a, uh, general, like a format of what it is we're looking for. Yeah, we, uh, we 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 plan on including it on on next week's Diamond Time to get some more some more support, and uh, we'll, we'll, the the basic idea is that we we have someone streaming with the requirement of being in chat room. You have to be able to interact with chat room because the idea yep. is that no one spends New Year's uh, their New Year's celebration alone. No matter where you are, no Diamond Clubber or Frog Panther spends new years alone so yeah idea. um that, that's the idea and then also we're going to try to i don't know if, how much i want to say about this we're going to try to get some of uh, our more creative uh diamond panthers to submit some artwork to have a a an auction of sorts to raise some money uh and right now our our ideal is um extra life is going to be the target, going to be the recipient of whatever we raise. Last year it was, uh, what Lurch? I, yeah, I was, uh, I Lurch. Scripted, yeah, Blurch. Yeah, Blurch. I always screw up the name. Uh, the Diamond Clubbers from Australia. Yep. Yeah. So we did that last year. This year we'd like to we'd like to help out Extra Life and hopefully raise a few hundred dollars, maybe maybe more than that. And last year we raised like three hundred bucks. So something like that. Let's let's try to let's try to aim at doubling that. And uh, we just want to we want to get as much volunteers, as many people involved as possible from Diamond Club and from Frog Pants uh, from the Tadpool. So uh, a little pre warning yep. on that. If you got some ideas about that, feel free to email us ritualmiserypodcast at gmail dot com or podcast at gmail dot or podcast at ritualmisery dot com. And uh, yep. give us some ideas if you want to go ahead and volunteer early because you you got some stuff to go on. We're doing one hour, a minimum of one hour blocks, starting on the half hour. So if you want to get in early, uh, listen to this podcast, get a little pre warning on it. Um, just tell us which times or which yeah, what times we're, we're going to base it on what Eastern time. Uh, well, the way I have it in the doc right now is just it's all UTC. Yeah, you know, like just just UTC, tell just tell us when. Eastern yeah. time's the cool time though. 
Right. <laughs> That's where Curtis is at. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I think it's about uh, it's about this time. Gabe Barcia, Colombo, my DNA vending machine. Kent, you failed to stump me again, or or did you? Yeah, that that was one of the the <laughs> easier pronounceable names. So I I failed in the in the task of giving you a, a impossible to pronounce name this time, yeah. but I had to use this one. Oh my God, this TED talk made me uncomfortable. And- <laughs> And weirded the fuck out. This guy, he's an artist, and he uses science to make art. And he got these kits where you can basically put your DNA into a little like vial and make art of it. And he's collecting his friend's DNA. And he's putting it in a vending machine as art. It's. I don't think I like this. Yeah, I don't it, know how I feel about this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I, super I'm, weird. I'm he's, definitely, how... he's definitely planning on cloning his friends. Let's be real here. First yeah, that's, right, that was exactly. my initial thought. Yeah, or framing uh, he, them for supposedly murder. He's making, supposedly he's making statements and 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 car, uh, you know starting conversations about like the morality of cloning or the you know uh, the genetic rights, like who owns DNA. You own your own. Can it be sold? You know, stuff like that, supposedly. But I don't know if those conversations are starting. I think it's just weirding people the fuck out. Speaking of that, I mean, that kind of goes along with the whole GMO thing with people um, uh, trademarking the like their GMO corn and shit like that. I just think this whole thing about genes and DNA, it's getting really fucking weird, man. I don't mind saying it. It's getting really weird. Like, it's, it's getting into that realm of... What it reminds me of is drones, okay? So drones, like, they started coming out, and these people started freaking out about it, and then it's kind of calmed down, and they're starting to put laws in place, and they're making sense, and they're, they're actually uh, getting pe- the community's involvement in creating the laws so they do make sense, and they're, they're usable, and they're, they're restrictive, restrictive enough to, to be safety of community, but not so much that you can't fly them at all. That conversation should have happened, happened with GMO and DNA fucking 20 years ago. Right. And it didn't. Yeah. And now it's just this fuddled mess and it scares the hell out of me where it's going to go next. Because if I'm eating GMO corn and then that DNA becomes, you know, you know what I mean? Like, do I still own myself? Like, or does, <laughs> or does Asgro suddenly own, own me? You know, like, I don't, I don't yeah. know if that's how DNA works. If but... I, if I piss in a cornfield and my DNA <laughs> is spread into the corn, like, is that now my corn? Or am I like time sharing that with, with, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think the conversation it, it, and it's the big money is going to win because they've already got their hands in it and shit like that. Cause the average American didn't care about it until it's too late. But that's, that's a conversation that like we need to be having. And I'm not even talking about like the possible health uh, uh, benefits or, or def, you know, uh, bad stuff or whatever. God, I can't think of the word. Anyway, um, I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about who owns what. Yeah, and that's super weird. That's something that's basically brand new. Like like you said, this is something that's been going on like 20 years or something. But really, that's actually probably longer. Uh, but that's brand new in the history of humanity. We've never had to even consider that sort of thing. Yeah. Like, who owns corn? Well, who, who's who got it in their sh- in their barn? Well, it's in my right. barn, but, I, but, but Jimmy grew it. Well, uh, hmm. You know, that's that as far as it went. Now it's like... <laughs> Now it's super like, easy to figure out. Now Jimmy seeds flew in, uh, Jimmy's pollen flew into my field. Now I've got Jimmy, Jimmy John <laughs> corn. Like whose well, corn is it? It, it basically but Monsanto it, actually Monsanto actually manufactured the DNA for that corn. So they're just gonna come and take all of your property now. Right. Sorry. Exactly. They actually do that sort of thing. And oh, it, oh this falls right in line with the like in, intellectual property law and things like that, and how that spills into real life things like food and yeah it's just it's a big it's a big mess amos uh joe Mon says uh, if south park has taught us anything pig and elephant dna do not mix <laughs> <laughs> that's 
That's a callback from the from the early episodes. Uh, yeah. Hey man, uh, Hector Garcia, we train soldiers for war. Let's train them to come home too. I thought this was a great one because we just celebrated Veterans Day here in the U.S. last week, Remembrance Day in other parts of the world, and holy shit, man! It it's 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 this is actually one of those talks that I, it got me thinking. Like this is really good. Someone's put some real thought into this and really wants to make a change. Of course, he plans on making money off it. Everybody does, but there's there's some you know someone's put some real science into it and uh yeah it is it, i recommend this one for anybody who's concerned with veterans affairs um especially like family that have people coming home things like that it, it really it really does and this is the first ted talk i've ever watched that actually uses the word mind fuck <laughs> really yeah i actually didn't watch i skipped over this one on purpose yeah no 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 I, it, yeah it's there like, and I have that, a sort of general question about this one. Does uh, it at all get into politics or just... No, it is not like, not okay. political at all. It is, is specifically about the health of soldiers coming home after being in a war zone, and then 72 hours later, they're playing in the, in the park with their kids. Right. You know, and that's what they're, that's what yeah. they're saying. is like, that's a total mindfuck when you're, you're literally in carnage on Tuesday... And on Friday, you're at the park with your kids. Yeah. Yeah, there was actually, there was a movie a few years ago, and I, the name of it's escaping me right now, of course, right? Uh, but there was a guy that he was doing a tour in, I believe, Iraq or Afghanistan, one of, one of the uh, current hotspots. Uh, and he came home, like every day was, he was fighting for his life, fighting to survive every single day. Uh, mortars getting shot at etc etc well he gets home and he's in the grocery store and he's watching this woman get pissed off about like vegetables weren't on sale or something like that and he just he could not get his head around yeah like why is this a fucking thing like yeah stop that you know um but yeah that's 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 what came to my mind when we started talking about this we yeah we're not taught at all how to assimilate back to society. Right. Yeah. I mean, they give you a little briefing, like a little 30 minute, like, okay, folks, uh, your family's going to be here and, you know, you might have some stress and if you ever need to talk about it, go see your chaplain. And that's about it. Yeah. It's, it's a conversation that needs to be had more and more just about the entire journey of someone who, um, has chosen to serve and just what that process looks like coming back because it's it's not normal at all um, coming back from that kind of environment um, and just being plopped back into the regular world or what have you. It's, it's a ridiculous extreme and it's something that is often alluded to but like what systems do we really have in place for for everyone that everyone has access to everyone that served should have access to sort of a reacclimation system there it should be part of the process absolutely and there are programs in place but they're mostly reactive so if you come home and you find that you're having problems right you can't deal or whatever yeah, there's there's yeah. help you can get, but a lot of times it's too late at that. Point. Yeah, I mean it should be it should be done by default. It should be like, yeah. like it's it's something that literally every everyone needs, whether or not like the the need is equal amongst all. Like that, there's there's no reason why it shouldn't be happening for everyone in my head anyway. The, the thing that gets me is my first couple deployments. It was just like yeah, you go back. Then if you have problems, call the chaplain. You know, yeah. and and yeah. then it, it, I've seen it go from that until like my last deployment, even coming home from Korea, like before I left Korea to come back and rejoin my family after being away for a year, there were programs available um, to, you know, to to, to go and, and preempt the, the, the reintegration with the family. There were programs available like, hey, uh, oh, your, your family's at Dias. OK, well, we can we can set you up for things there to do in your meantime and then we can also follow up with you and once you get to your new assignment and you know get you to to go through some small counseling there and like it's been a big change but 
and maybe it's different for the Army and Marines, things like that, the people that are actually doing the shooting, not us Air Force people that are usually chilling back, just sending jets out to go to our shooting mm-hmm. force. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that, that's definitely one of those things. Like, it's Why did it take so long to be paid attention to? Really kills me. Yeah. I, I think a lot of it's an education thing. Uh, people didn't realize that, that uh, you know, as much that it's affecting people. Right. Because there was a, like the John Wayne attitude of, oh, uh, quit being a bitch, you pussy. Like, yeah, like, absolutely. You know, being yeah. A little bitch, you know, stuff like that. Like, that's, <clears throat> so people would either, like, you know, quote, man up, or they would kill themselves. Right. Or, you know, and then, oh, either way, problem solved. I, I just can't see someone going, grab him by the Marine. Um, so, Curtis, Jeez. hey, uh, man, you, you do all kinds of stuff in and around Diamond Club. Like, uh, just this, uh, just recently you were on um, on Scam School. Uh, yeah, uh, that, that is a thing that happened. Uh, last time <laughs> I was in Austin in the beginning of October, um, it was just like, oh, hey, Scam School hap- is happening. And like, oh, hey, now you're in this episode. And then... Um, flash forward to I blacked out the entire thing. No, not really. But um, <laughs> and then this episode comes out. Um, so yeah, I'm in this in this random episode of Scam School where I do I try and I, I didn't watch it because I hate watching myself, so I haven't actually seen it yet. So I don't know how how bad it looks when I attempt this this car trick, um, but. Well, you guys can let me know, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be watching that one. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Um, yeah. So, what else do you have going on, man? Like, you're you're a, you're Diamond Club for life. Like, what else? What other projects yeah. you got going on and stuff? Um, yeah, I mean, aside from just lurking around all things Diamond Club when I can, I have a music review podcast that I do with R underscore R aka Raphael um, in the chat. And it is called Headphone Alliance Podcast. And you can find that at headphonealliance.com. And I'm just on Twitter at Curtis LaRock. Um, you'll figure out how to spell it in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, right. <laughs> or the show title now that we change change formats. Oh, and, the, and, and Twitter feed <laughs> yeah. is gone. So now that's the thing. Um, now, are you going to be at South by Southwest this year? I believe you are, right? I intend to be yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah, we we are we are like deeply looking into doing something, not uh, not just from <laughs> La Rock L A R O C K La Rock. No, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're looking looking to do something, uh, and Diamond Club is like you are exactly who we're looking to do it with, man. If we can get something going with all of our different podcasts down to South by something a little unofficial, and uh, man, that that'll be that'll be rad. I would be so down for that. Yeah, that'll be so yep. rad. We will absolutely be doing something along those lines. Yes. Yeah. Um, hey, dude, uh, you seem to be a bit of a geek, man. You got some got some swag stuff behind you, some posters and shit like that. You're into music, man. I'm I'm, I'm sure you're into some other things. Have you ever uh, Have you ever just wished you had a spot, like a store online that just had tons of geek shit that you could just go to and and because uh, I mean I I've suffered from this myself. Like, hey, you know what'd be really cool. It'd be really cool to get an old school Arc, uh, Atari controller with just a little button in the joystick, you know, and just use that as a, <laughs> as a mouse. Like, is there a way that I I I'd have to I have to have some hardware with that? Like, maybe a USB version to use with my ROMs and shit like that, man. Like, I've had that problem. Do you know any way we can solve this? Like, do you know a way anywhere that we'd be able to do that? Like, just be able to click and, and go. Dude, well, to to add to the problem, like every now and then I'll find a device like that, but the thing costs too damn much. I would love it if I could find a place where I could find cool gadgets and, and stuff like that, but also not spend a lot of money on those things. Man, that'd be that'd be pretty fucking badass. Like, I don't even know a spot like that, dude. Uh, have you ever even heard of a spot like that? I found one what? recently. No way. Geek Gaming Geek? Yeah. Let, let me uh, have a take two on that one. <laughs> GamingGear.com. That's Geek the letter N, GamerGear.com, GeekingGamerGear.com. There's, there's so much cool stuff there. It's really, really reasonably priced already. And the cool thing that, that our listeners get 
is an additional 10% off at checkout if they use Ritual Misery. Wait, 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 wait. So if they go to the site, geekandgamergear.com, they use the mm-hmm. code Ritual Misery as if they were actually watching this show. Exactly. They, they save 10% off their entire first order. Yep. That's, that's fucking unreal. Curtis, have you ever even heard of, a, of something like this? The, I mean, this sounds absurd, right? I have, I have not. This is, this is all, like, I'm actually really impressed. This, mm. that's, mm. They, dude, I'm can't, highly man. intrigued. This, this, is a, <laughs> this, is a, this is a great find, man. An amazing find. Very yeah. awesome. Very Check awesome. Check it out. Uh, Geekandgamergear.com. Use Ritual Misery at checkout. Uh, lots of really cool stuff. Go check it out. I, 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 I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm just going to have to check. I got to check. We need proof. I, I, th- I think you're bullshitting. I think you're completely bullshitting. Oh, my God. A USB yep. Super Nintendo controller? Are you shitting me right now? Eight dollars, like for eight bucks, I can hook this motherfucker up to my ROMs and just play ROMs all day. <laughs> yes, insane. Eight dollars? Are you fucking kidding me? That's insane. And you can get ten percent off. Ten percent? That's like that's like that's like twenty cents or something off, right? It's like eighty cents. They got they got Zelda jewelry. <laughs> Man. I, I gotta so check, I gotta check out this stuff right here. Adve- let's go Adventure Time jewelry, huh? Anything there? Uh, oh my God, they get Adventure Time jewelry. Like, what are we doing with our life right now? Like, why is this stuff not in my closet right now? Man, actually, actually, they got some pretty cool shit on here. Like, I'm, I'm not even. Playing. <laughs> this is the first time Amos has been to this site. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna say uh, it is, but I'm not gonna say it isn't either. <laughs> they got an ocarina necklace, dude. Like, I'm down. This is shit, yeah. All right, so what is that? That's geekandgamergear.com, right? Yeah. All right. So so rad. So fucking rad. Hey, um, man, I I found out this thing. I don't know if you guys saw it in the show notes and, and followed the link. Um, Adobe came out with this tool. It's basically a Photoshop for audio. It's an extension on, oh. um, on Audition. And what it does is it checks uh, word patterns and it deciphers what you're saying. Use voice recognition to decipher what words you're saying. And then you can go through and once it's got all these words, you can copy and paste the words in different orders. And it will take the sounds and make it sound like you just said, I, I mean, instead of saying, I want to fuck Sarah on Saturday night after the ball game, it can say, I want to fuck the ball after Sarah on Saturday night. Like, it'll change the whole thing around, and it'll sound completely natural. I mean, there's still some tweaks and stuff to go, but it was really, really impressive. Nice. Did you guys check That's, this out at all? I didn't click it, dude. I I, I did not get a chance to take a look at that yet. Oh, my God. Like so, I, I want to see if I can get this. See, hopefully, there's no ads. Okay, there's no ads. Um, let's get this, and I'm going to bring it down here. And this dude is just using, like, just typing words and just making shit up as he goes along. And uh, that is, I could, I could spend hours our just fucking around with that. So especially like take old episodes of our show so and just the- switch shit around. Yeah, we were talking earlier about how you would take unsuspecting clips of me talking during a pre-show or something like that, and you would put it way out of context at the beginning of our shows. Yep. And it was some pretty funny stuff. Imagine if you could have twisted my words around to say basically whatever you wanted. Oh, it's happening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as soon as that's available for for audition, uh, and that's that's gonna happen. Um, I was trying oh. to play the little video part, and it just uh, it just it just jacked up. So I'm gonna <laughs> scratch that. Is this gonna be, is this gonna be a, like a plug-in? They it's they didn't me. really discuss how they're going to implement it. Just that they're gonna that this is going to be available. That they're still in the in the process of working out the tweaks. But it was is ready enough for them to show a live demonstration of it. Um. So yeah, it's it looks pretty badass. Now it's going to be dangerous though. Can you imagine like if all that shit we saw in all the spy movies about the voice recognition and stuff like that is suddenly like real? Like it's no kidding real. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dude. But I, I, yeah, this, this doesn't shock me though. I mean, we've, we've kind of been there for a few years, I think with, with that sort of tech. So it's, it's really cool to see that something is coming out from Adobe that, you know, makes it easy to play with it. Yeah. It's just, I always wonder like, okay, the tech is there, but like how accessible is it really? And 
things like this are just sort of a reminder. Oh yeah, no, yeah, we're there. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn it, we're there. <laughs> hey, um, Curtis. Yes, sir. You you got a birthday coming up? Oh yeah, that's the thing. Uh, um, yeah, is that is that like something that happens like every year, or just this year in particular? Usually, um, yeah. it's funny because it's a little bit of both. Um, so <laughs> I have a birthday, but this year it happens to land on Thanksgiving. Ah. Um, and I I just threw that in up as a topic of interest, not because people give a crap, but because I like to talk about birthdays and holidays and stuff. Um, and I was just going to ask, like, what do you guys do for the holidays? Do you do the birthday thing? Do you do the Thanksgiving thing? Oh, my gosh. Can't you want to go on this one? You have an <laughs> interesting family dynamic. Mine's really simple. Uh, man. Yeah, so typically... Typically, we have a, a big shindig at our house, or at least that, that was the tradition for the majority of my Air Force career. We would, especially when we were overseas, we would have, you know, we'd invite like all the young airmen over and have just a big shindig, big feast at the house for Thanksgiving. Nice. Uh, in, in, the, in the States, it, it'd be more, instead of like the young airmen, because they usually like found somewhere to go, they'd usually drive home or something like that. Uh, it'd be, you know, friends and neighbors. Uh, we'd come over, we'd, but it was always a big feast. Uh, yeah, th- Thanksgiving is, uh, that's, that's one of my favorite things. <laughs> Who doesn't like feasting on awesome food? So, uh, my wife, she finds it offensive to not recognize someone's birthday. Like that's the one day of the year. <laughs> and, and it's not like a celebration of their birth per se. It's just, you know what? If you're going to take one day a year to just recognize somebody and say thank you and be appreciative, it's going to be that day because why not? Why not just make it that day so you're not piling up on each other and not forgetting? And yeah. she makes cakes or cupcakes or whatever is appropriate. She takes the day off. She's all about it, even if there's not a big present deal because we're not we're not a really big present family when it comes to that kind of stuff. I mean, we'll we'll make sure they get something, but you know, we uh, hell we got twins, so they you know <laughs> was a, ha, both happen to be born on the same day, so that makes makes birthdays kind of. Weird, but Ben's born on the same day. They, what? They, yeah, well, Sterling was barely born on the same day. Like, she was born at like twenty five minutes to midnight or something like that. Um, <laughs> so you know, it's it's one of those things. Now, Thanksgiving, on the other other hand, I'm not one of those big people. Those people that sits around and watches football and shit like that. It's not a. It's not multiple families getting together, all that kind of stuff. It's just a whole lot of homemade um, macaroni and cheese. Whatever major <laughs> meat we can throw together, whether that's a big ham or fried turkey, like I've been practicing or whatever, Ooh. and all the fixings we can we can get, and then seventeen hours of cooking sweet potatoes for my wife's sweet potato pie, which which, which a normal family would it would take like months to get through all this damn sweet potato pie, but no, I'll burn myself for all these sweet potatoes, <laughs> and that shit will be gone in three days. I'm coming to your house, dude. <laughs> you me. You're frying a turkey, her sweet potato pie. Like I'm, I'm there, dude. Yeah. At my place, we, we usually keep it pretty small, but there's a nice assortment of food. Everybody participating a little bit, which is nice. Um, as we've gotten older, of course, a lot more, and like, um, sort of everybody contributing their own little dish. My my younger sister actually has started cooking a lot more often and she's got like her cornbread pretty 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 down so i'm gonna i think i'm gonna encourage her to do the cornbread this year i might do the mac and cheese because my mac and cheese is on point but my mom always has to handle the turkey because my mom throws down (laughs) on the turkey so yeah (laughs) Oh uh, yeah, that's uh, that's, that's good. Time. Uh, a couple years ago, for for the twins, we made fake cakes out of styrofoam that we got at the Hobby Lobby. Oh put, my god! Put, put icing evil. on it, and then underneath, because it was like a donut, and then just a solid, you know, a solid circle or whatever. Um, and in that little cavity in the middle that was that was made in there, you know, we put their cell phones, their brand new cell phones that we got them. And then we covered, uh, we covered okay. it with icing, and then put the candles on. And everything else, they blew out the candles, and they both went to eat the eat the cake. 
and they didn't want to say anything. They were they were both thinking like this is the worst cake ever. They, <laughs> they, they, they were like, this is hard and it's not it doesn't taste very good. Wait, they were eating the styrofoam? They just took one bite before we all lost it and we couldn't hold it together no more. <laughs> so so then they're sitting there and I actually I, I sent a, a a message to their phones and of course their phones are going off. Yeah. In the cakes. Oh, they're, both, they're like, what the hell? Yeah, it was great. It was it was wonderful. So um yeah good times good times that's pretty great <sighs> um you guys got anything else i mean curtis we, we need to tell people where they can find you on twitter and, and all that stuff because you're you're there i'm like, on the twitters yeah um at curtis larock um that's c-u-r-t-i-s-l-a-r-a-q-u-e if you have no idea what i just said it's because i have a frog in my throat i'm sorry so what's the frog's <gasps> twitter um I, we haven't gotten him one yet. We're no? expecting him to die in like two days. Yeah. So, well, then, uh, it's gonna ha- it's gonna need a, a post mortem Twitter then. Yeah, that's so much work. <laughs> so much. Work. It's not worth it. Uh, uh, Waffleopagus says it's a uh, at c u r t i s l a r o c k. Is that is that wrong? Is is that is not what that not what it is? I mean, you can go there, see what's there. Um, Hashtag save the frog. <laughs> <laughs> oh man kent uh where can people find you uh, twitter as well at rm underscore del noche i haven't been super active on there but i plan on getting like reinvigorating my twitter very soon um uh, if you're a beer guy like me and you like reading beer reviews you can go to ratebeer.com and look up username del noche and read my over 500 reviews um i'm at at Ethan Kane on the Twitter, that's the only place it can be found because uh, fuck social media. Other than that, it's just too time consuming, and I'm trying to do too many things at the Diamond Club. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's how that goes. We have so much stuff in store, but Kent, we have one more thing we have to take care of tonight. Yeah, one, we one absolutely more do. bit of business. So Curtis, unbeknownst to you, we have been playing Ritual Liberty during the show. So basically, we have been secretly selecting words, just kind of cherry picking things that somebody said. It might have been your words, might have been our words, and putting them into a categorized document that creates a rich, a uh, basically a a Mad Libs story. I'm kind of terrified. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna. You, you know, you know, Kent. You keep saying unbeknownst to you. Eventually, we're gonna have a guest on the show that actually listens to the show, and they're gonna know. <laughs> Like and they can call me out on it. <laughs> I was just like, you know, kind of letting it slide. Um, I was kind of doing the thing. Um, <laughs> All right. So um, so are you reading this or am I? Like, what, what's going on here? Who's doing what? Um, I set it up. Why don't you go ahead and read it? Oh. I think I read the last one. Did I read the last one? Uh, I don't know. We didn't do know. it last week. Did we flip a coin? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to go. Should we rush him? (laughs) If you want to become a heightened member of the SpongeBob SquarePants fan club, you must say the following white people rich pledge. I do cognitively swear to uphold the changes, swear to uphold the DNA vending machines of SpongeBob SquarePants, even at the cost of my own lost voice. I will assist and defend the sacred scam school and strive to act namelessly at all times. I also pledge to tell all my friends about SpongeBob's great music podcast and to drive loudly in the living room if I ever miss a show. I understand that SpongeBob is counting on me to carry the birthday of comedy and tune in for nerdy laughs every day. I seal my oath by signing the overseas anthem of the SpongeBob SquarePants Election Club. SpongeBob SquarePants, hello. We pledge our on-point mac and cheese to the fellow as faithful, as interesting, as true as yellow. <gasps> wow. <laughs> Beautiful. So, uh, Beautiful. That's the most inspiring thing I've heard so in the Amos past now- two weeks. Amos is now uh, officially a member of the SpongeBob SquarePants fan club. I guess. Is, is that what happened? I think so. Damn, Were you not talking. before? Well, I mean, <laughs> not officially. I've, I've been lurking, you know, just watching right. Nickelodeon for years, just randomly. 
Oh, dear God. That, that was one of the more interesting ones that we've got. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, so next week's show is a call-in show. It'll be the day before Thanksgiving. It'll be just me and you, and if anybody wants to call in and and uh, say what they uh, say whatever they want to say, uh, we'll be there to listen to tales of thanks and of misery and uh, rituals. Um, and uh, other than that, it'll just be me and you hanging out. The week after that, however, we hit another, like, Someone that I admire as as in the tech world, the podcasting world, and just as an overall pretty great person, Allison and Sheridan. A, yeah, I was, was going to say, and a fellow uh, Apple nerd. Yeah, that, totally. Miss um, <laughs> Al, Allison Sheridan will be joining us on the 30th of November. That's two weeks from tonight. And then after that, I think we're going to have another schedule change, try to go a little earlier because we, we kind of like this this chat realm thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So absolutely, I might involve a, a day change. We're still debating that, but we're almost for sure going earlier. Uh, just pay attention to Twitter at Ritual Misery, and we'll, you'll catch all the details there because we'll spit them all out right there. Um, thank you to you, Curtis. Like, holy crap, man! Even without a voice, you're yeah. still rocking it up here. Uh, you're still <laughs> rocking it up here. Thank you guys so much for having me. I, this is, was so much fun. And awesome. uh, be sure to check out all his stuff. Do what? I was just gonna. I was just echoing you. I was, I said we definitely appreciate having appreciate having Curtis on because he's one of those those chat roamers, one of those diamond clubbers that we've been talking about having on for I, I don't even know probably half a year. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, and of course you can uh, get more information about the show ritualmisery dot com. So we've had this music forever, and I just want to officially say that while we appreciate Kevin McLeod. And all his contributions to the podcasting world. If someone out there decides they would like to create some new music, we're over a hundredth episode. It might be time for a change, other than yeah. whatever I scrapped together the day before we started recording. And uh, it's an open invite. If you've got some music you'd like to hear on a podcast, and you just um, don't mind having attribution as your only payment, by all means, kick it over our direction. We'll make sure you, we'll make sure to play it. You know, if we even if we get more more multiple suggestions, we could even play, play them in like you know succession, like just every episode play a new one, until we finally settle on one. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Hell yeah! So that, that's the game again. <laughs> that's an open invite. So anybody out there who wants to do that, feel free. Go ahead and do that. Um, meanwhile, we do have this music right here to play, and as that fades in, I will tell you once again, ritualmisery dot com, and ritualmisery dot com slash swag. Go over there, get your still in beta t shirts. They're almost gone. Uh, act now. If you want a beer from us at South by or Nerdtacular, because we'll be at both, um, go ahead and get those shirts. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Oh, come on, man. It wouldn't be uh, a, an episode if I nailed the, the opening and the exit, all right? <laughs> <laughs>